Hey everybody, how's it going today? Uh, just wanted to let you know what we're up to today. We are heading south uh, where I live. We're going down to Caledonia, Michigan. We're gonna go see Russ Paul. Uh, Russ uh, is a central boiler dealer and he has his own construction company and known as SOS uh, Property Maintenance. And uh, we're gonna head down there and we're gonna talk to Russ about uh, the proper chemicals in your outdoor wood stove uh, in the water jacket. So he's got a display down there that is very good. So uh, I wanna go down there and really get in depth a little bit on uh, maintaining your furnace uh, as far as the chemicals in it. Uh, the other thing is uh, he's got a display of a furnace. Uh, it's a cutout. A uh, gentleman uh, had a furnace for seven years. The first year he had it, uh, he uh, had the chemicals in it. He changed the pump or something like that, I, I think I was told by Russ. And, and then when he put the water back in, he didn't think the chemicals were necessary. And in six short years, you can see the damage of just running water, not having your chemicals at the proper level, what it can do uh, to the metal inside of the water jacket. Other than that, I want to give a shout out to uh, Forlo for the love of hunting uh, out of Whitefish, Montana. Uh, everything is made in the United States as far as uh, they have uh, camel, uh, tree camel, basically what it looks like, uh, snow camel. They have solid colors. Uh, they have the under uh, layer, the closest to you. Uh, then the mid layer, then the outer layer. Uh, the other thing is they have fishing uh, stuff, hiking, uh, besides the hunting. And when I say everything's made in the United States, everything is, uh, uh, the down is here in the United States from ducks in the United States. Uh, it's sown in the United States. Uh, their factories are in the United States. Uh, American people uh, putting this stuff together. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description below and you can click on and go right to their website and check it out uh, anything made in the united states uh, if i need it i want to buy from american people and american companies so uh, check that out but other than that it's about an hour and uh, three quarters of a drive down there so uh, we'll turn the camera back on once we're down there with russ uh, hang with us hey if you like our channel uh, go ahead and subscribe. We just like to try and bring uh, information to everybody that we can. Uh, so it will help you out. So hang with us. We'll see you in a little bit. Down here to uh, Caledonia with Russ Paul. And I appreciate your time today, Russ. Um, Russ has been a central boiler dealer for a while now. And uh, how many years? It's probably five. Five I've years. Been, I've been doing it 16, working on the stoves. And we've owned the dealership for, I think, five years. Now. Okay. So, and what I meant, wanted to come down here for is, is talk to everybody about uh, the maintenance on, as far as uh, water treatment uh, with an outdoor wood furnace. And uh, the thing is, is a lot of people are out there looking uh, for an outdoor wood furnace right now. And then we have a lot of our viewers that, are, uh, that own furnaces. And so even if you got one of the competition's furnaces, you can still, you know, you still got to treat the water. And so with treating the water, what's the purpose or what is the water jacket? And a lot of people don't know what a water jacket is that don't have a, a furnace. Well, well, basically you have the outside main jacket of the stove that contains the water and inside of all that water is the firebox, which is where your fire is that warms the firebox, which warms the water. And then the water jacket is all the outside around that that contains that water in place. Okay, and it's self-contained. Self-contained. And so the water that's in the water jacket does not come out of the shower, doesn't come out of the faucets or anything like that. Nope, nope, it's a closed, closed system. Yeah, yeah. And then why, why is it important uh, to keep that uh, water treated? What's a, I mean, we put in chemicals yeah. and that is for what purpose? You got a chemical reaction between steel and water at any okay. given time and so we want to keep that steel from reacting with that water and starting to rust which is going to start causing the pits to happen inside the water jacket which eventually will cause a leak all right um, and then so on mild steel furnaces what if a person has a stainless steel furnace we still treat it i mean that the 
you still want to take care of the investment you have. Right. So we don't want to cause any reaction in any way, shape, or form that's going to harm that water jacket or firebox of any one of the furnaces. Right. Now, if somebody has antifreeze in their system, and uh, some people do, do they still need corrosion inhibitor in that? Yep. Okay. Definitely. Central recommends using raw glycol in their system so that you still use their inhibitor products that we can test for. Okay. All right. So on this, um, we talked a lot about, um, example, some of your jars. This one here, Russ, why don't you grab that zero? Mm -hmm. So if people aren't um, looking at putting treatment, this is, a, what's in here? I mean, it's steel wool and water without any treatment. Yeah. So you can see the water, the water rust. Uh, you can't even see it, see it in there. So that's with none in it. Then what's the next, the next one is. So is, what we did is we did the next one is just basically a quarter of what is recommended. So 25% of what is recommended. If we got up here, it's, it's the recommended number. So this is basically 25% and it's still at 25% treated. It's still to the point where you can hardly see the steel wool. So still rusting still rusting all right yep. so your firebox or your water jacket is still not protected correct so you're a person still going to have issues correct down the road down the, like, road. Down the road it's going to have issues mm -hmm. so your next one is at what percent that one is basically 50 percent. so that's a 50 percent treated um so that's basically half of what they recommend okay um so it's still got discolored water um, but you can see the steel wool, so it's it's far more protected than nothing, um, but not still to the point where the longevity of the stove is, is still affected by it. Exactly. So eventually they're still going to have problems. Yep. Yep. So if you have your chemicals at the right amount, mm -hmm. what, I mean, then we're, and these have all been in these jars for how long? Since 2015. Okay. So, so. we're talking going on six years correct all right correct. so this is treated properly and you can shake it up you can do whatever and there's not a speck of rust anywhere on that steel wool um, or in the water or cloudy in the water so that's at the minimum level of what they recommend of the corrosion inhibitor yep so with this so if somebody's down in this area mm -hmm. and they check their outdoor wood stove water and it's it's cloudy and stuff what would you recommend you've got a chemical that you can go and treat their system? So what we recommend is putting in a sludge conditioner. Um, we put that in the water. Now do you, with the system like this, or do you drain it first? We do it with it in, you could do it either way, but basically we put it in, we run it with the stove operational for five to seven days, okay. circulating through the system, and that cleans that up and then we drain it and we fill it back up, circulate it for another 24 to 48 hours to get everything out in cleaner water. Okay. And then drain that again and then we fill it and properly treat it. So this stuff is going to take the gunk or whatever out of the water jacket Correct. and flush it out and then retreat it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Basic, basically it etches into the pits and stuff like that that have already been created and cleans them out. All right. So, so once that's done, now I was telling people that Central Boiler, well, with their old system, their old test kit, mm -hmm. and they've up, they've upgraded. But yep. this old, you had to kind of be a mad scientist. I always looked at it. Yep. Yeah. It's a it's a series of counting drops. I mean, if you're using the inhibitor plus, it's a series kind of like pool chemicals where you put so much water in and then so many drops of one and then count your drops on your other in order to find out how what's your level of treatment which are these numbers correct basically. correct um, so now if we go up to the new product of the molly armor then they have that is the this is the new stuff that correct. central brother just has come out with a hank in the fall somewhere in there yeah 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 eight months ago yeah so basically they took the, the inhibitor and the Molly Boost and blended it together to make that is basically what they did. And so that's where that product comes from. But now we can use, instead of the chemicals, now it's simply just test strips. 
All right, so, so instead of doing all this drops, drips, and swirling it, it's kind of like a pH test or a pool test. So where, where do you have to be on that? Well, now we just have to be at least above like the 350 mark on here. Um, according to Central, we can't over treat. So as long as we're above the 350, that's where we want to be. No okay. Below it. All right. So. so then does this stuff uh, work? Because there used to be a separate test kit uh, with this stuff for antifreeze. Mm -hmm. So now with this, and if you have the antifreeze, do you still need another different test kit? No, nope, no, it's all in one. It's all the same, same, yep. just one and done. Yep. All right. Done. So how often should people change their water? If their water is cloudy, we talked about that. Yep. So what if their water is clear and if it's been three to five years, are they, should they just, is it good if it's still testing or? We recommend that people change the water every three to four years. Okay. Just get anything out, flush anything out, flush anything that could have um, settled to the bottom, get any residues out that you can, um, because we're basically trying to protect that firebox. And so the cleaner we can keep it, you know, the better off you're going to be longevity wise. So, yeah. so we recommend three to three to four years, train, drain the water, retreat it. It's a relatively inexpensive insurance. Yes. You know, and so forth. So three to four years is where we recommend. All right. And that's why with uh, like uh, people's watch some of my videos that uh, Mike Bosher, his was 16 years old and it's still going. And my brother Boone's would be 20 years this year. And it's still going and it's just that maintenance on the inside the water jacket and in our firebox so you know basically we're trying to cover everything to help people out Correct. so um, but if people got uh, questions uh, and want to find any of the chemicals uh, I'm gonna leave a link in the description and that will take you to Central Brothers uh, website and at the top I believe it is at the top there's a dealer locator and so even if you have, because there's a lot of furnaces out there that uh, the companies have went under and they're not around no more, that the people can get a hold of any of these chemicals working all stoves. So they could go to the uh, Central Brother dealer locator and uh, click on that and put in their address and it'll show them uh, their, no, their closest Central Brother dealer. And so they can just go there and they can get stuff from you or whoever whoever's closest to them. Do you ship stuff? We do. So yep. there again, uh, SLS properties uh, here in Caledonia. Yep. I always say it's just southeast of Grand Rapids. Yep. So um, that's where you can go and uh, get some of that stuff. And Russ, I just want to say thanks. I know you're busy with uh, the wood stoves. You're having a great year this year. Yep. Uh, you also do construction. And we right. talked earlier, you're busier than heck. So I appreciate you uh, sharing a little bit of time with us. And for people out there that's looking, for an outdoor wood stove. So, yep. appreciate it, young man. You bet. Thank you. So, hey guys, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, keep trying to do more uh, videos on uh, outdoor wood stoves and helping everybody out. Talk to you later. Bye bye.